Welcome back to the channel, uh, gents, and the one or two ladies that watch this. So here we are today. We're going to talk about the P320, and should you buy it, is it a re reliable platform to use? There's some things that have been going on all through the interwebs, mainly Instagram. A lot of drama about this gun, uh, talking about some severe issues with it, specifically the military M17 model. This is not that. This is closer to the M18. It's a precursor but it's all the same platform. It's the SIG P320. So let's talk about it. The uh, SIG P320 platform, there's a, there's a image going around of a M17, which yes, is the P320 platform going around where it has broken right in here. Pretty much this part of the grip has broken clean off. Now, a quick disclaimer about the P320s. They, uh, they have an internal fire control group that comes out and that is classified as part of the receiver. So it's, yes, it's a catastrophic failure if that happens, I'm not defending it, but it's something that can, your gun is not gonna have to be thrown away. Let's, let's put it at that, your gun would not have to be thrown away. So one of the big things going on is uh, Lucas Bodkin, I'll roll in footage. Lucas Bodkin has uh, posted that image and came out and let me let me start off with I have bought products from T-Rex Arms I've consumed a shit ton of their content so I'm no way trying to throw shade at Lucas Bodkin but I, I want to remind him that hey man you know you're very well respected in the gun tubing community you are an influencer, whether you like it or not, whether you choose to be or not, you influence people's purchases. And I, I even commented, I even commented on your thing and you replied back that you shouldn't have to with everything that has gone on. I digress and I'll get into that shortly. But I even commented that, you know, you should, you should run a test. You should test this equipment and show the failures in this firearm. And this is not gonna cause me to not buy products from T-Rex Arms. So let, let me go ahead and state that. I just, 
I wish that if you go and choose not to make holsters for a platform because of their failures, I, I wish you would go and make a video, you know, not only explaining why, but run the gun, not sandbagging it, saying it's it runs slower than the Glock and the M&P. Come on, man. Like, so Lucas, more or less, and I know you won't see this because you probably get sent hundreds, if not thousands of things a day. I know how that, th that goes, but more or less, I would like to see if you're going to stop carrying a product line for a firearm and you're going to be the beckoner to call for other companies to drop this product line, mind you that it's a platform that the U.S. military uses, the Army and the Marines and other branches are fielding it. Am I saying it's better than one or the other? No, that's gonna end up being user preference and you're gonna talk about the catastrophic failures and whatnot, but I know that you have many, I've talked to many people that have trained with you, that know you, I know that you have quite a few P320s that never get any screen time, never get any air time. It's always your Glock 17 or your Glock 19 setups. Whatever, you like Glock, you shoot it the best, more power to you, but to blatantly shit on another platform because of things you hear on the internet i don't agree with that bro and i, I like don't get me wrong i'm still gonna buy t-rex arms product i'm still gonna watch your comment i mean your content i'm still gonna do everything the way i was doing but this is one point and it's okay because this is america we can disagree but this is one point that i disagree with that if you are going to do x y or z you need to show us the ABCs of it. You need to show us. You need to have one of these handguns break. Do the things that you're doing. Test it. Run it against the Glock. Please run it against the Glock. I want to see that. So many users out there would watch it. And it's going to generate content. And either way, it's a win-win for you. It's a win-win. You're going to get the views. You're going to get all the kickbacks from it. So I'll do a quick gear rundown on this one. And I'm running my Blackhawk T-Series holster that I got for stupid cheap off eBay, brand new. It's pretty similar to Safari Land. It's got your, instead of having the old school ones having it here, it's got it back here like a Safari Land and it's a level three duty holster. I really like it. And then just a double mag pouch that clips on and off your belt. I'm just running on a basic leather belt and then got my drop point for that I got for Christmas. For my wife it's a really nice lightweight knife utilitarian knife and uh i really like it pretty good knife but got it stowed on the kit and i like it because it's a really light knife a way to add a knife and then of course we're running our tourniquet cat 5 or cat 7 i can't remember from north american rescue i've got my self-defense rounds here probably should go ahead and put those back in the gun but yeah overall pretty happy pretty happy with the results And I want to state too that this is going to be around 200 rounds, a little over 200 rounds ran today. I've done a few warm ups. I'm not out here trying to, you know, three gun it or whatever, comp gun it. I'm just getting back into my groove, been dry firing and whatnot, but I've not really drilled much with pistol. So here's me getting back into my groove as well so yeah i'm going to be taking some things slow i've got a timer but i'm not timing myself well not even a timer it's just a beep and a buzz to get used to the cues and running it with our p320 we're running our 15 round mags i've got three of them here and i'm gonna run some of the trash ammo that i have in my in my safe right now and this is a wolf polyformance steel case non-corrosive 115 grain, you know, like I said, still case. So I'm not even gonna run the good stuff in the SIG and just show and prove that this gun will run. And if we have any malfunctions, then it's gonna be on camera. For seven yards on our target, uh, we'll do some one uh, R1s. But when I'm ready up our gun with our steel case ammo, I'm really digging this Blackhawk holster. So getting a good stance so one round reload definitely a zones just running a little slow here
bad. Ah, that was me. One R ones are fun just to get you rolling, warmed up. But yeah, I'll go ahead and explain about this P320 that I have. I was not a SIG fanboy. I, I've been into guns for all of my life. I've had a handgun for over 10 years. I've, I've had, that was my first purchase was a handgun. Maybe we'll go over that one day. But the biggest thing is I bought this from a friend that was looking to sell it that needed out of it. It's a SIG P320. I, I believe it's a 3.6 inch barrel. I'll have to, I'll annotate in the bottom here, but it's the compact version of it. So, you know, it's not the compact of today, but this is an older gun. I think it's around a 2016, 2017 model. It has had the trigger fixed because we all know about the trigger defect on it. I'm gonna holster it here and talk about it. I bought this gun and back in 2020, early 2020, I like Glocks. I've shot Glocks. I've owned a Glock for a while at this point, and I like Smith and Wessons. I actually own quite a few Smith and Wesson Wessons. I own more Smith and Wesson products than I do Glock products. I bought this gun to flip it because I got it at such a good deal. And lo and behold, I came out and shot targets with it, along with my Glock, along with one of my Smith and Wessons, shot targets and ended up shooting better. Now, whenever I first picked the gun up, when I first picked the gun up, I, I didn't like the, the feel of it. I didn't like the higher bore axis. I like how the Glock sits low in your hand and the Smith & Wesson sits somewhat higher than the Glock, but I'll be damned if I didn't take this gun, pick it up and shoot it really good. And I really like the trigger. It has a really good trigger and I've really taken to this pistol. Two alpha slow. Not bad, not bad. Picking up the pace. Getting there. In the beginning, I was a little off trying to rush it. So as I slow down, I'm getting better. So if you're in the comp world, you know, this is A, C, and D. And so a few here, that was later on. But as I slowed down, I got better. These are gonna be time, you know, this is gonna count against you in time, even though you're running fast. Slowing it down and getting good hits is where it's at. So you don't have to be you know, the super ultra mega fast shooter or whatnot. Just train to get good with your accuracy. Then you can speed it up. And this is about seven yards. So where this rock is, I'll show you. And then let's look at the truth of the matter on it. How many of us in the civilian world, we're all civilians, most of the people that consume this are not gonna buy a handgun and use it for combat. You know, that's a very small percentage. How many of us are gonna be doing what the military is doing with their weapons. They're gonna be dropping them out of helicopters, throwing them over a cliff, and doing all that type of stuff that is going to, yes, break them. And yeah, the gun without a magazine in there for reinforcement, it could probably break. And what I heard is, and I don't know how true this is, this is all speculation and what I've been told, second, third, fourth, fifth hand, whatever. I was told that the dude was getting out of a large armored vehicle. The vehicle has changed somewhat, so something similar to a troop carrier like a Bradley. And he had it holstered. And a lot of times when they're doing maneuvers, 
they are probably not going to have a mag in and he had it holstered something similar to this but a safari lamp and as he was getting out it got caught in the gate and broke tweaked and broke the gun so okay i, I understand that i i get that it broke and you know short of a metal frame gun probably most of your polymer wonders like the glock are going to break it's just going to happen making sure the mic's still good it's going to happen you know Slow going down to grab it for the tack for you. We're definitely in the D zone that one. I want to say something to attest to. She is freaking dry. Look, look at this. Dry. No, no lube is on this gun. Like I have some in there, but she is running freaking dry and putting all these rounds down range. Talk shit all you want. So here we are with our two. Attack reload one, so there we go. Yeah, I was a little off and I was kind of shooting off to the left. Yeah, yeah, excuses. I need to tighten this up a little bit, but still a dead bad guy. Either way, not completely unhappy with it. And here, so three bouts, three A zones. We concentrated more on this one, so not bad. This go around, we're gonna do a build drill. Everybody's favorite, especially uh, old GT. So what it's gonna be is we're gonna have the timer go off, six seconds, set that up, six rounds as fast as we can. Let's rock and roll with it. Went up just a little bit. Need to control it, rising up. It's been a long time since I've done a build drill with pistol. Uh, Budged on that one. Purchase on the gun. Bring it over like that. Not bad. Not bad. So here's where your dry firing comes in. This, the first bout, I was completely over because I had a bad grip on the gun. Then I was dialing it in. So dry firing and practicing getting your grip on the gun is very important. Money. Not a bad bell drill. See, that's what practice gets you. You can tighten up. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two in the C zone. So these two were already there. I didn't retake really them off. So six. Two in the C zone. That one's just outside. So. Eventually I'd like to get all A's. Got to practice at this. I've not done it in a long time with a pistol, but hey, just for what we're doing here, testing out a gun, boom. We're gonna run two into this one, two into this one. So two and then two, reholster, no reload or anything. Two and two. So for this last one, we're gonna run some Mozambiques here on the one you see to your right. So Mozambiques, two in the A zone, try to get one in the A zone in the head is what we're going for. So gun is ready. We're running brass on here because we ran out of our steel cased ammo. Just went over its head. Oh yeah, not bad. In the C zone throat area. Still missing that A zone. Getting there. So as we can see here on one of them, I hit two right here in the throat area and then one in this A zone. So need to work on those. I do those for fun just because all the YouTubers are doing it, gun tubers or whatever are doing it. But here is a little better. We're getting in the A zone and we're getting close up here. That's actually two rounds stacked. So I ain't mad at it. Headshot's still a headshot, even though they may survive that or whatnot. Just a safety check though, right? So let's talk for a second if the P 
320 is a bad gun to shoot. Keep in mind that I purchased this second hand and the guy who shot it put a significant amount of rounds through it. I'm, I'm not gonna say like a thousand or so, but we're gonna just say 500 rounds through it because the gun did show use. It showed it was very discolored here, it still is. And it showed that it had round count through it. So we'll say 500. I myself have put over 2000 rounds through this handgun uh, in the past three, almost four years that I've owned it now. I bought it in quarter one of 2020. We're rolling in to quarter one of 2024. So yeah, four years of it, that many. We put 200 rounds on it, and I don't know when the last time was that I oiled the gun. No issues whatsoever. No issues at all. And the gun was dry on oil. I could see that it was wearing on the top. I mean, it's a good gun for me. It works for me. Can I sit here and recommend any kind of gun and tell you that's the best handgun? Can I pull out a Glock? Can I pull out an MMP? Can I pull out a Springfield? You know, can I pull up out a Canik? No, like it's gonna matter to you. There's gonna be bad guns in all those batches. And I'll, I'll tell you, like talk to anybody that's in the military during the time that they're using the M9s. I've heard people praise the M9s. I've heard people hate the M9s and say that they shot it and the freaking slide just blew off of it. You know, I've heard all kind of outlandish things about how they break. So don't sit here and let a gun influencer, YouTubers, it's gonna, cause they all start parroting. Once one starts, they all start on Instagram. It was like a frenzy on there. They're all going to start parroting, telling you that this gun is bad. And my train of thought is the military tested it. Uh, they put it through all kind of rigorous tests and it beat out the Glock. You know, if there was any serious downsides to it, then, then yeah, I wouldn't let YouTubers deter you from buying the gun that you like or going to like, if you have a range where you can rent firearms and you're just getting into this, try them all out like i never in a million years thought i would like this gun that i've had for four years that i've had zero reliability issues i i would not hesitate to carry this thing without oil it's not been cleaned in a year <laughs> sad to say it's not been cleaned in a year and that's probably the last time it got oil and it came out here and ran about 250 to 300 rounds through it with zero issues 100 percent reliability it didn't go off on its own. I didn't drop, you know, I didn't sit here and throw it down and trash my gun because this is my carry gun. But I, I guarantee you, there's been times that I've dropped this getting out of my truck. There's nicks here and there on it where I've dropped it with a round chambered, did not go off. It's been holstered on me. I can't tell you how many hours I have of carrying this gun. And I've, so the main thing I'll say is don't let, you know, influencers people on instagram people on the internet tell you that a gun is particularly bad like talk to people that have experience with them that have shot them because most people i know that have ran these guns it, it's a complete 180 on the story and it, it just kind of disappoints me that a lot of gun influencers gun tubers things like that will not get on here and actually run them and show you uh how they can be a good gun or show you how they break show you their downfalls show you why they're so bad like I'm, I'm closing in on 3,000 rounds at least, at least on this gun. Like I said, I don't know what the previous owner had, but we'll say 500 just because of the wear and tear. But at least, you know, 3,000 rounds, closing in on 3,000 rounds, 2,500, 3,000 rounds on this gun. And uh, yeah, I trust my life on it. I trust to carry it. I have a lot of hours carrying it and I will keep carrying it. You know, it's been a good gun, zero issues zero issues 100 percent reliability ran complete trash ammo through it i've got to take it home and clean it now it's been a great gun you know and that's the thing i want to end on is get out here and train and do shit. get out here do stuff like this do drills find this a range that's not static where you can get out there and move at least hone in on you know your accuracy well without further ado remember resistance to tyranny is obedience to god Ah, gun wasn't ready. Fuck. Yeah, it's slower. Oh! Ready zone.